Why would you want ducted air filtration? I mean, this looks like a lot to do. What's the point? After all, these options are self-contained. That's a nice feature in itself. Inline fans are an easy way to power a ducted system. Let's put one on a woodworking cartridge filter and test it against the Model A air filter. Here's my alpha build of the Model E with a budget 8-inch inline fan. To the end of the duct, I added a diffuser. It helps convert one-directional high-velocity air from the duct into low-velocity multi-directional airflow. This reduces air turbulence without restricting flow. I know this looks silly. Bear with me. Now you're in the dark. Don't be scared. There's going to be some, there it is, dust. It's gross. Look at it swirling around, just waiting to land on your freshly painted project. The worst part of it is that it can hang in the air for hours, just riding the currents until you breathe it into your unsuspecting lungs. I find it very interesting to be able to visualize the movement of air in this way. There are upflows and downflows, eddies and whatever. You could call this a computational fluid dynamic simulation on a budget. Air behaves like a fluid, like water, for instance. In a moment, you can see a pressure wave from me walking by a few feet away. There. With the flip of a switch, all these currents snap into alignment. This is the benefit of ducted filtration. If I scatter some dust and then turn on an air filter with the fan pointed in the traditional upward direction, you can see that dust goes up. Trouble is, we don't want that. In fact, the dust is flying pretty much every direction. This is what turbulence looks like. What if the fan is pointed into the filter box? It's not what you think of when you typically think of an air filter, but let's give it a shot. You can see that dust moves laterally towards the fan. No coincidence, this is my preferred method with this type of filter, especially in a small space. One thing that I noticed during this test was that the dust moves very quickly with the large drum fan. So to turn up the power on the ducted option, I added a second inline fan. This shot is a bit out of focus, unfortunately, but hopefully in general you can see that the dust now moves towards the filter more rapidly. Let's run another test. There are some filters in the corner over here. Can ducted filtration prevent the surface of these from gathering dust? Let's make some dust the old-fashioned way. No need to hold back, just throw it all towards the filter. Then clean the table off with an equally careless method. After days of that, the surface of these was perfectly clean. This is the only method of filtration that gave the best possible result. The Model A with the fan pointed into the filters allowed for a slight amount of dust buildup. When the fan was pointed up, the surface was covered in dust after a few days. Running the pull configuration is a fine choice in a large space, but in a small space, it ends up spreading dust all over the room. With two 8-inch inline fans, I get about 900 CFM of airflow through this 120 square foot space. That gives me about one air change per minute. If I do some sanding without the filter running, we hit 175 nanograms of PM2.5 particles in the air. After 10 minutes, those values drop, but not by much. Kick on the fan and air quality is perfect in 7 minutes. Now, if I am running the fan continuously, PM 2.5s max out at 62 nanograms of dust per square meter, a 65% reduction in airborne particles. About 3 minutes after I stop making dust, we hit binary particle counts. Just zeros and ones. Here's a setup that I did with my Model B with 20 by 30 inch filters and a 12 inch inline fan. As a diffuser, I am running a massive carbon filter. For this project, I did run dust collection into the other room. These flexible ducts aren't the most efficient way to transport air around the shop, but with my 650 CFM dust collector, they work pretty good. I have some drop-down plastic walls in here. The air outlet is beyond the walls of the plastic room, so there is always positive pressure on the outside of the room and negative pressure on the inside. This causes the clean, filtered air to be constantly pulled through the cracks in the plastic sheets so that dust cannot escape. With about 900 CFM of filtration, the dust levels never get that high in the room, and where it matters most on the outside of the room, the air stays virtually dust-free. To power a ducted system, you need an inline duct fan. 
They can have no features or all the features, a low price or a high price. You can put them on top of one of my kits, or you can hook a duct to the filter and mount the fan on the ceiling. This option allows you to run multiple fans at once off the same filter. I highly recommend using 3M Merv 13 or 14 filters. They are the most effective filters I have tested. They even outperform budget two inch thick filters. But no matter what filter you are running, you can duct tape some screen printing material to the surface of the filter so that you can vacuum it. This significantly increases the lifespan of the filters. In the description, there are links to the materials I recommend most, and I'll have a video out on this subject soon. There is no reason why that same concept can't be applied to canister filters. You just wrap the pre-filter around it, add some wheels, a slip ring, and spin to clean. To speed up the vacuuming process, I made a curved attachment I call the claw. I went through five generations of this design before I got the performance I was looking for. In the video game industry, this is similar to what we would call gamification of a task. It's satisfying to watch the dust build up, and then it's kind of a reward to vacuum it away. The claw also handles work surfaces. Now that we have a few filters to choose from, let's walk through the setup of a ducted filtration system. The basic concept will always be the same. Clean air comes out here, flows over your work area, and then goes into the filter. There is an easy way to do this. Put the fan on the filter box and run one duct with some straps to the other side of the room and you're done. The carbon filter is optional, but well worth it. It not only reduces VOCs, but it acts as a diffuser that reduces turbulence and improves dust collection. Now for a more complex setup. Because I don't have much space in this room, I am going with the Model E cartridge filter and 8-inch inline fans. This thing is enormous and the room is not, so the filter must be as out of the way as possible. So on top of the air filter itself, quite a few parts go into this dust collection system. There are two fans, a splitter for three ducts, a diffuser, slip ring, and of course, two large activated charcoal filters. To start, you will want to figure out where the fans go. The ceiling in here is less than seven feet and the fans hang down below head height, so they will need to stay as out of the way as possible. To mount these budget fans, I made an adapter that makes mounting easier. It bolts onto the fan from one side and screws into the ceiling from the other. Screw the mount into joists, rafters, or wooden slats in a drop ceiling. This will support an eight inch through 12 inch inline fan from iPower. In most cases, a ratchet will not fit between the top of the bolt and the side of the fan. A wrench is going to be the best option for install. Put a washer on it and then the nylon nut. If you don't have a set of ratcheting wrenches, you are missing out. Use the link in the description to pick up a set and support the channel. I've also mounted one of these on a wall, but I feel that it causes more vibrations in the structure. Oh, just listen to that non-ratcheting wrench. It is such a bore. At this point, people are thinking like, look out folks, that 3D handyman is gonna try to sell you some wrenches at the 10 minute mark. Like, why man? Perfect timing for a Y-shaped splitter. This fitting allows me to run two fans on the same line. I tried duct tape on this in the prototyping phase and it kept falling off. Foil duct tape is a much better option. Next, I'll mount the charcoal filters using a wall mount I designed. These filters can also be hung easily from the ceiling with straps included with the filter. You can also just place it on the floor. Personally, I like to set these up at table height to keep airflow strongest in that position. It is generally best to install the larger items in a ducted system first and then run ductwork in between them. Be sure to leave enough space in between the various components. The hook goes on here first, you must make a solid connection with the stud. Drywall by itself is not strong enough to hold the filter. Be sure to find where the wires and pipes are inside your wall before drilling into it. The loop, as I call it, is installed one foot above the top of the hook. Straps that come with the AC Infinity filter that this is designed for go through the holes. I strap these down with just enough space to get the canister in. Doing that ahead of time makes this last step as simple as possible. I designed this whole ecosystem around 8-inch ductwork and fans. If people like this design, I can create some parts for 10 and 12-inch ductwork somewhere down the line. Then you can connect the ducts to the charcoal filters. 
The heaviest thing I have ever printed is this top of the line pillowcase air diffusion adapter attachment. It is thoroughly tested to redirect air in all directions without reducing airflow. The key is that fine Jersey cotton. This part screws into the stud and the diffuser slides right on with the screw to hold it in place. But wait, there's more. You can feed the duct directly onto the flange or you can use this quick change fitting. Either way, the duct slides over the top of the flange and you screw down the hose clamp. Two of these clamps come with the AC Infinity ducting, but you might need more depending on how many times you cut the line. Now we screw the duct onto the inline fan for a test run. The duct is too long. Easiest way to cut this stuff starts with an appropriate set of wire cutters. Then using a utility knife, cut the foil outwards from where you split the wire. This is very thin metal coated in plastic and it can be very sharp. It also tears easily, so I like to cover the ends with duct tape, especially underneath the hose clamp screw. The charcoal filters are expendable, so if I don't want to remove VOCs from the air during a certain process, I can quickly switch over to the diffuser. And back again, at ludicrous speed. I might have gotten a little carried away with this design, but it was fun designing all this stuff, and I hope that it at least shows you some of the options with designing a system like this. Here I am running the final two ducts. Plastic pipe strap is cheap and easy to cut to size for mounting any kind of ductwork. If you don't have a lot of slack in the ductwork, then you won't need that many straps. Try to keep the runs as straight as possible to improve efficiency. I made this slip ring for the filter that has a ground line running through it. I snake the wire up the duct and over to the nearest grouting location. This will reduce static electric buildup when vacuuming the filter. Here we have the completed setup. The ceilings in this room aren't quite seven feet, so I can still squeeze under them without having to duck. I plugged both fans into a power strip and then into a fan speed controller. Whenever the filter gets dirty, I can take the dust collector hose off the CNC machine and vacuum the pre-filter. These two charcoal filters have been in use for about a year and they still do a good job removing smells, but they aren't quite as potent as they used to be. I'll do a video soon where I replace the charcoal in these filters. For this video, I used the budget inline fans, but there are also some really nice options from AC Infinity that are even more powerful than the budget brand. They are unique in the way that they can run almost silently at a low speed, but at full speed, they seem to be just as loud as the iPower fans. If you have made it this far, thank you for putting up with all of my jokes. I try to have a bit more fun with this particular script after writing about 15,000 words on air filtration in the last two weeks. If I left anything out, or if you have any questions or criticism, do let me know in the comments. All the 3D printed parts and kits you saw in this video today are available at my shop. There are also videos on both the Model B and Model E kits and free plans for these kits as well. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe and stay classy.